Welcome back to Modern American Canasta's Can You Canasta Challenge Round 3. It's summertime when we thought this would be a great video to share and see if you could challenge yourself for this next round of questions. Round 1 and 2 are both on our YouTube channel. We invite you to join us and subscribe at youtube.com slash, don't forget the at sign, Modern American Canasta. Feel free to invite family and friends and challenge them to our Can You Canasta Challenge. Let's get rolling. If at any time you need more time to think, simply press pause and then resume when you're ready for the answer. Question one, when picking the pack with an ace on top to open, which is true? A, you must use a pure ace meld. B, you can add one or two wild cards. Or C, you can never pick the pack with an ace to open. What's your guess? If you said A, you must use a pure ace meld, you are correct. When picking the pack with an ace on top, no wild cards can be added then or at any time during this round. Question two. My partner and I agree to signal. It doesn't always work. Sometimes they discard a seven, so I assume they have two in hand. I pick the pack and try to close sevens, but they don't have two more. What are some reasons for this? This is a great question and a question that was posed to us through email. Please email us at modernamericancanasta at gmail.com if you're not on social media or join us on our Facebook group, Modern American Canasta. And we know everyone started as a beginner and we love questions and discussions about all things Canasta. Back to answer two. Signaling is not an exact science. It's a strategy. You should discuss it with your partner, what your quote, false signals might be. These are discussed in chapter 22 of our book, Modern American Canasta, The Complete Guide. You could find it on our website, modernamericancanasta.com. Some false signals include, one, after a player opens and has minimal cards hand in hand left, and there are few or no sevens in the discard pile, they want to keep cards in hand to be in a better position to pick the pack. They might discard a seven and hope to get a pair. So then when they have a turn, they can pick the pack and get that seven back. Two, when players are going for a special hand. Three, they can be using the seven as a safe discard if there's a large discard pile and they're trying to discourage the competitor from picking the pack. Of course, this bears in mind that they are counting sevens and know that they're not throwing the fifth seven on the pack for the other team to close pure sevens. And four, baiting the other team into picking the pack, knowing they are unable to close a pure ace or seven canasta. You might say, well, how do they know? What if the other, your partner just picked the pack and you know there are at least three sevens in that pack? There's certain clues that you can get from discards and exposures and different things or melds that you know or think you know what other players have in hand. So paying attention to what's going on in your own hand and others is exceptionally helpful for strategy. Question three, if I have a meld of aces with one or two wild cards, am I not allowed to go out? Will our team be penalized for not completing a mixed ace canasta? Is it both A and B or neither A and B? If you said D, neither A and B, you are correct. If you have aces and you add a wild card when you open, which is the only time you could add wild cards to aces, it is treated as any other mix meld. There's no special penalty bonus. There's no penalty um, if you don't complete it. So aces become a regular meld when you add wild cards to opening. So neither A or B are true. Now we're on to question four, and this one will give you a little extra time. Here on the left, we have people playing the game, and, and that's in yellow, and on the right, we have actions. So we want you to match the person with the action. So the people are scorekeeper, any player, dealer, player to the left of the dealer, player to the right of the dealer. And the actions we're asking you to match with them are who deals the cards, this one might be obvious, who announces the required point count, who announces the score, another obvious one, who shuffles the deck, who shuffles the deck last, if desired, who cuts the deck and counts out eight in the turn card, and who replaces threes, if any, and starts the game. 
So this is something that's really important. The scorekeeper, which can be any player, announces the score. They should also announce the required point count at the beginning of each round, or at least announce the score loud enough and clear enough so that all players can figure out what their required point count is. It's just a very helpful and proper etiquette thing to do. Any player can shuffle the deck. However, the dealer has the option of shuffling the deck last. As we know, the dealer deals the cards. Then, this is a little bit out of order here. The player to the right of the dealer is the one that cut the deck and counted out the eight and the turn card. The player to the left of the dealer, since actions go clockwise, is the one that replaces any threes and starts the game. Now on to question five. If my partner ended the round with a special and I had four aces in hand, does our team get penalized 1,500 points? No, you're in the clear. The team that gets a special hand is only awarded those points and nothing that their partner has either in hand or melded counts. You might be saying, what do you mean melded if they got a special hand? A reminder that there's a thing known as the courtesy special. So the partner opens and that very next turn, their partner can get a special. And this is called a courtesy special. If this happens, none of the cards on the table are counted. None of the cards in the pl a partner's hand are counted. Only the special hand is counted. The other team is scored as usual. We do recognize in our chapter on house rules that there is a very uncommon house rule known as wipeout scoring. This is when the team that didn't get the special gets absolutely nothing for either getting points or uh, for any anything on hand. They just get a full zero. Question six. If both players have three aces or three sevens in hand at the end of the round, how is this scored? A, there's a 1,500 penalty per player. B, there's a 1,500 penalty per team. C, aces and sevens are only counted for the penalty, or D, aces and sevens are individually counted in point count as well. A, B, C, D. Which ones do you think are true? If you said that A is true and D is true, you are correct. The penalty is per player. So if you have three aces and your partner has three aces, that's minus 3,000. Same goes with sevens. It is not a per team penalty, so that's why B is false. C is not true. A lot of people sometimes say, oh, I got the penalty of aces. Take the aces and plop them on the table. That's not how it works. Aces stay in your hand and also are counted individually, so are sevens, for your point count. So another reason why it's really important not to be stuck with aces and sevens at the end of the round. Question seven. If I don't have a lot of wild cards, but they don't, if I have a lot of wild cards, but they don't meet the required point count, can I open by adding a wild card to meld of aces? When opening with a wild card meld, you can only use a pure assist to reach the required point count. You cannot add any wild cards to other melds until you close your wild card canasta. So even if you don't have seven of them to do a splash, but you have five, but they're all twos, that's not going to meet your 125. If you have three tens, then you could have 100 with your twos and 30 with your tens. That's a pure meld. That works. You cannot add one of your wild cards to two cards to make it a meld and make it a mix meld with a wild card meld. That is not proper. Another note is you cannot add any wild cards to other melds until you close your wild card canasta. Here's another long one. Which of the following are true about wild cards and wild card melds? If you have five wild cards, you don't need to meet the point count. A wild card meld satisfies requirement of a pure meld to open. A wild card only meets the pure meld requirement if it is all twos or all jokers. You cannot go out if you don't complete a wild card meld. The most widely accepted rule is that you cannot pick the pack with wild cards. Some house rules permit this. And a wild card canasta is worth different values depending on the cards used. If you have five wild cards, you still need to meet the point count. Even if you have six, 
The only time that you don't need to meet the quote point count is if you have a splash in hand of all seven wild cards. Then that counts as a canasta and that's a way to open, an alternate way to open. It is not a special. Remember, a special has to have 14 cards all exposed at the same time. So on some older score sheets that we've seen around, under special hands, they have scoring for aces, sevens, and wilds. Don't be confused just because those are grouped together. Closing aces, closing sevens, and closing a wild card canasta are just bonus points and very valued. They are not special hands. Special hands need 14 cards. Okay, we'll go on. A wild card mail satisfies the requirement of a pure mail to open. This is true. It is false that it has to be all twos or all jokers. This is the one meld that two different type of cards can be put together and it's still pure. It's true that you cannot go out if you don't complete a wild card meld. And it is true that the most widely accepted rule is that you cannot pick the pack with wild cards. It is a very uncommon house rule that does permit people to do this. So if you only have wild cards in hand and you pick a wild card, you can discard the wild card and you should put it in the opposite direction of the other cards. So if anyone picks the pack going forward, they do not get the wild card or any cards below. This used to be called freezing the deck and happened with threes. In modern American in Canasta, threes do not freeze the deck and cannot be discarded unless it's your final card and you're discarding it face down to go out. And finally, it is true that wild card canastas are worth different values depending on the cards used. All the values are in our companion guide and you can take that in our book. We have it twice. We have one to stay in the book and we have another one with little cutout lines if you want to take it with you to your game. Thank you for joining us for round three of our canasta challenge. Like we say with our cute little visual, we want to be your canasta hotline and we're looking to connect with you. You could find us on Facebook at Modern American Canasta in groups. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget the at sign. And we're also on Instagram and threads with the same Modern American Canasta. Thanks for joining us and we hope all your games are very special. Sorry for the pun. Have a great day.